XP1. It's a one-of-a-kind Hyperloop pod that made history as the world's first to complete a full system Hyperloop test. This Virgin Hyperloop One pod set the record of 240 miles per hour on just 550 yards of track. And now it's pulled by a truck, covering even more ground, hitting the open road. This is the one, this is a functioning Hyperloop vehicle. And the pod itself is amazing. I mean, at this point, it's kind of a historical artifact. It's kind of like the Kitty Hawk plane, you know, that the Wright brothers flew. This is the actual vehicle that has been run 400 times out in the desert in Las Vegas. Andrew Smith is one of the people working hard to get the nation's first Hyperloop route built in Missouri. That's why the Virgin Hyperloop One pod is parked on a bustling downtown St. Louis street. It's making its way across the country, the star of its very own national road show. It's stopping in the states competing to be the first to have a Hyperloop route. Missouri is on that short list of finalists. The pod stopped in Kansas City, Columbia, and St. Louis, the actual stops for Missouri's proposed Hyperloop route through the I-70 corridor. A trip from St. Louis to Kansas City would be within 30 minutes, traveling 670 miles per hour, exactly 28 minutes, and a trip to Columbia, 15 minutes. If I could get to Kansas City in half an hour, I would for sure ride it. I'd definitely love to be one of the first to ride on it, if that, if that was possible. The way it works, Hyperloop electronically shoots a pod through a low pressure tube. With magnets lining the tube, the pod glides above track through magnetic levitation at airline speeds. The lack of air and friction allow the pod to quickly reach high speeds. But until that day comes, the pod is slowly making its way into communities as an introduction. We love talking to people about it because there is that kind of enthusiasm for you know, something that is this new and this innovative. In St. Louis, it's parked outside the 2019 American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials annual meeting. With all the car and foot traffic, the pod is highly visible at a location where there's no shortage of curiosity. It's definitely some new territory we're not used to, but uh, I think it's a great idea. It's going to be a lot safer than airplanes and automobiles probably. The pod is made of carbon fiber so that it's lightweight and strong. It's on display out in the open, not in a glass case, so that people can come up and touch it. Virgin Hyperloop One wants people to relate to the pod. They want people to know that it's not so futuristic that it's untouchable. It's right here and now. It's literally the, one of the new forms of transportation within the last 100 years. Like, this is 21st century at its finest. Smith had that vision long before he laid eyes on the pod. He was co-founder of the Missouri Hyperloop Coalition when he visited the test site. It was amazing then in that setting, but it's really great to see it in St. Louis. That's why he pushed for a Hyperloop feasibility study, which confirmed Virgin Hyperloop One in Missouri is commercially viable, safe, and sustainable. Really just to determine, is this real? I mean, can, can this thing actually function? Can it do what it says that it can do? And could it be built in Missouri? And the answer to that was yes, it can be done. Now Smith is vice chair of Missouri's Blue Ribbon Panel on Hyperloop. The public-private group chaired by Missouri's lieutenant governor is devoted to finding ways of making Missouri the location of the nation's first Hyperloop track. Answering the specific process questions about how do you go about building a new infrastructure system um, in the state of Missouri. After an extensive study spanning months, the panel released its report answering many questions. The report details how it will cost anywhere from $7.3 billion to $10.4 billion to build a Hyperloop system in Missouri. It's believed the project can be achieved with private investments. We have work to do, right, like anybody to, to get this over the finish line, but what I would tell people is I really wouldn't trade our position um, you know, with any other state. The report covers many questions Smith had at the very beginning, before his involvement. The questions people passing by are asking. The likelihood of us getting St. Louis and Kansas City, how fast it would go, and how many people it could hold. How long would it take to build those tunnels? If it would be affordable at all, like if it would be cost effective for people who are traveling much. Virgin Hyperloop One is happy to provide answers to 
anyone with a question. We actually got stopped once by a police car because they were interested in what we were <laughs> towing around. Um, and they were like, you know, we don't actually, you're not actually breaking any laws or anything, but we just want to know what it is. XP1 doesn't have an interior for passengers. It's a test vehicle. While there's nothing for people to see on the inside, they wonder what it would be like riding in one. At 670 miles per hour, would passengers feel the acceleration and speed? It will be very boring. We're in an enclosed environment, so what that means is that that takes away the turbulence, it takes away the shakiness that you may feel on a rail line, um, and so you don't get that kind of um, movement in the, in the pod. You won't be able to spill a drop of your coffee. Many people question if they see themselves riding in one. I, it, I don't know. To be honest with you, the no windows thing's a little freaky. It kind of reminds me of like a, I don't know, a bit like a space shuttle type of thing. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ride it. I, I couldn't do this no window thing. The idea is to have an interior that's visually pleasing and calming. But well before the exact interior is determined, the company plans to build a national certification track. We're looking at different locations throughout the U.S. that can host this. Um, we've got a lot of interest so far. Smith says the blue ribbon panel on Hyperloop's report will hopefully position the state of Missouri to win a bid for a 12 to 15 mile national certification track. Before we can start building between cities, we've got to have about a 12 to 15 mile full-sized route where the system can reach full speed and where it can be certified for human safety and where we can build a regulatory regime for it. And we're hoping that that happens in Missouri. For HEC, I'm Kathleen Berger.